episode is proudly brought to you by Revolution Power Solutions, the best solution to all your lithium battery needs. G'day guys, today we're going to be doing a bit of an experiment on the old theory, are mud crabs more prominent on the lead up to a full moon? So I thought, why not film this episode over four weeks, go crabbing on the lead up to a new moon, and then the lead up onto a full moon. So what I did was I placed four crab pots in exact same places with the exact same baits for the exact same tides for the exact same amount of time on those two different parts of the moon. Now this is something I've always wondered but I've never put to the test. So today, we're gonna to test it. Stay tuned guys, cause you're gonna be surprised with the results. So on this day, I put two pots out in the creek using two mullet heads in each pot as bait. About 300 meters off the bank, also two mullet heads in each pot. And out of these pots, I got two legal mud crabs in an overnight soak. I then went down to our local area and I went walking for mud crabs on the high tide and I'll roll that footage right now. And just like that guys, we're a couple of minutes from home and we have nailed the tide this time. So this is where we were a couple of weeks ago and yeah, it was just way too low. But now we've got a good little bit of tide here. Once again, my GoPro's died on me. So I'm gonna have to rely on my phone. I enjoy filming with the phone more, but sometimes they just don't have a place and this is where a GoPro's great. You whack it on your net you get some really good views. So when I see a crab, I'll um, try and get the camera going and film it as best as I can for you. Just cruising around in the shallows here, just on the edge of the mangrove line, trying to keep my eyes peeled. If you can time this for a time when it's not windy, it just makes it so much easier also to see them. You can see them from ages away. But if you've got that bit of chop over the top of the water, yeah, it makes it a bit harder, so always. Um, try and try and get it on the glass out. Today's perfect. So I remember there was a couple of rocks in the mangroves over there. So I'm thinking, oh, here comes a crab now. Look at this. I'll just stay still and see if he keeps walking towards me. <laughs> Ooh, little fella. Hello, yeah, buddy. Don't come too close. What are you doing? What are you doing down there? Hey. Whoa. <laughs> This is where I feel like we're going to see a few more. It's where the rocks were, just over there. And I've seen a couple of crab holes. So. Hopefully they're cruising through these rocks. It's not deep here. You can see between my knees and my shins. I haven't seen much so far. Seen one muddy. Very small. Oh. Seen a crab just then, and he is scooting away real quick. I think he was undersized anyway, but come back, mate. I just want to get a look at you. <sighs> Stay still and see this shovel nosed shark. And the thing about just coming out and just cruising through places you haven't been. You learn so much, like I've seen so many, uh, like so much bait, heaps of gar, heaps of mullet, like really good area for cast netting. So yeah, now picked up another couple of areas where we can get liveys quite easily on big tides, which is very handy. Sometimes the big tides can be hard. They get up in the mangroves and you can't get them. So yeah, it's good. All right, come to another little open area here now. This looks great too. There has got to be crabs here. They've got to be cruising through here. This is too perfect. All right, we've seen two now. He's still, he's, this one's still too small. Woo! Well, that's two straight away. Just need to find one that's a keeper. Man, new moon, I tell you what. Hard going, very hard crabbing. If I come back here on a full moon, It'll be a total different story. In fact, you know what? Maybe that's what I might do. I'll keep looking and I will come back on a full moon and that'll be a good test for us just to really prove if it does because usually they get on the move on a full moon. So about seven days before, like I say, seven days before the full moon, they get up and they start moving. So this will be a good little tester because we're almost right on the new now and they're very scarce. And I should be seeing them everywhere. Righto. Here's a crab that looks all right. Moving through the shallows. Jeez, look at this. He's almost gonna swim into my net. There he is. I'm gonna put this down and see if I can get him. 
All right, we've got a crab in here. He's undersized, but that's the first, that's the biggest one I've seen so far. He's, he's not far off, I'll tell you what, but yeah, surely there's a bigger one around here somewhere. Mate, he's out. I don't know where he is. Oh, there he is. He's cruising through there. <laughs> See you, buddy. Catching them in these mangrove areas is like very, very hard when the water's sort of a foot and a bit deep. They'll just scoot very quickly straight under. So you really want to find them in the open areas. Got a lot more chance that way. But you tend to see a lot more in these areas. I think one of the the exciting part about this is um, it's like. Yeah, it's fully like hunting for one, but not as involved as pig hunting and all that, obviously, but it's like hunting. So you gotta really keep your eyes peeled. You gotta work the tides and then you gotta work the right times. With this, it's like when you see one, it's like, oh, boom. It's like, that's the excitement. It's uh, like when I spear squid in winter, it's, oh, it's so much fun. You see one, you see two or three in a pack, you spear one, you hold it in the water and his mates won't go away and you get your mate over and get another one. It's just, yeah, it's, it's really good fun. And it's addictive and walking around like this, especially at night time, uh, doing this. It's just, yeah, I love it. I'll show you guys, all you have to do is find spots to do it. That's the hard part. And then also get out when the tides are right. Big, big, big tides you need. Like this. There's a muddy there. There's another muddy just here. So they're definitely around. It's just, they're small, heaps of small ones. Come on, where's your data? All right, here's a crab. What sort of size is he? Again, too small. No, uh, it's a lady. There she is. I'll leave her alone. It's gonna be very interesting to see the difference between the new and the full moon, that's for sure. So it's gonna be two weeks after I film this, I'll head out and I'll, um, I'll film the full moon. I'll put the pots in exact same places. I'll use the exact same baits. And yeah, that should give us an honest, honest sort of difference if that theory is correct. And you know what the funny thing is? Like the crabs are absolutely going off out in Morton Bay at the moment. So if I put my boat in and chuck the pots out, I'd be absolutely braining them. But it's more fun this way, more entertaining. And it's something you can do with your kids. Um, I enjoy teaching everyone on here some of the stuff that we've learnt and that we know and yeah you know you don't have to if you don't own a boat this is what you can do you don't need a boat to get good feeds of seafood that's for sure we have seen prawns everywhere in the creek just the other day so you can walk there with your young fella your daughter missus whoever and um and you can do it together you don't need a boat but a boat definitely helps golf ball <laughs> 50 cents there all right, another crab here. Once again, small. Far out. Oh, we've got one. That's got to be a keeper. Um, hang on. Hang on a sec. Oh, get in there, mate. Oh, I don't know if it is actually, but we'll have a look, eh? Get him out in the Oh, no. Get him. Well, he would have been closest to size so far. He just went boom straight down into the mud and hid. <laughs> good on him. Got me good. The end of this net is pretty thick, so you sort of want a, a thinner net. Anyway, that was fun. You find one in here with any water, and I'll tell you what, you can have your work cut out for you getting him in the net, that's for sure. It'd have to be a hand grab. <laughs> Tide's starting to go out now and it will go out really fast here so we haven't got oh, we haven't got long. Alright, another crab there. <laughs> Look at that, straight under the mangrove. Yep, definitely. All you young kids without boats, come and give this a go. Honestly, you'll love it. You will absolutely love it. And uh, even if you do have boats, this is something to do if it's windy or you just can't be bothered putting the boat in. It's so fun. You bring a cast net down, you'll um, catch heaps of bait. It's good. It's a good life. It's getting pretty deep here now. It's up over my knees. But as that tide goes out, you can follow it off into the mangroves there where the creek starts. 
So once the tide's out, guys, you can look for holes in the mangroves. You can stick your hand down there. You can look for puddles and crabs will be in there. So you can do it all tides. It's just, I enjoy doing it like this. I'm sitting here looking at whiting, mullet, brim, gar, mud crabs, flathead, heaps of stuff in here. It's unreal. Get tight there. Oh, there's a rock. Another crab. Oh, how's that? Sneaky little rat bag. Straight in his hole. Okay, so here's a crab over here. Ah, oh, it's a girl. Damn it. Oh, another one here. Too small still. But yeah. You don't need to come near my fort, mate. Bugger! I've seen so many crabs. Nothing legal. Oh, gee, we have a healthy, healthy fishery here in Morton Bay. I'll tell you what, it's um, it's really good. How many people live here and how hard it gets fished and, and crabbed and stuff? It really is. It's a good fishery what we have. There's so many brim and bait here. Here's one coming on his way out. I'll get the net ready just in case. Whoop, 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 where are you going, brother? Whoa! <laughs> he's, um, yeah, he's only got one claw. That was a boy, but he's still just undersized. So they're starting to move out with that tide now. They've got to. See, look, another one here. Way too small. So what they do is they bury themselves in the mud out here for who knows what reason. But when that tide starts to run out like it is, they need to come up and they need to get out back into their holes and the mangroves so they follow this tide out which is what they're doing right now that's why i start to see a few more but still nothing big at all once again another one here another one here wow they're everywhere you're kidding me i don't want to lose this one You're dead set got to be kidding me. That was a proper good crab then. Far out, man. I don't know if you guys seen it, but he was there. Had my chance then, I had my bloody chance. Here's another little one coming over the top of this rock. Mate, Devo. That's a hard thing with, um, you know, filming, I guess. I was trying to, trying to get me catching it at least, but yeah. How's this crab hole? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Sorry guys, I want to pause this video right here for two seconds to say a massive thank you to the boys at EC Off-Road for providing this month's Patreon winner, Ben Avery, with a brand new throttle controller for his car and a full merch pack. Once again, thanks guys. Now back to the show. Look at that. Last little bit of tide. <laughs> Go on mate, run out with it. Another one just here. You can see the tide just running past and they're just gonna cruise out between my legs. Let's have a real quick look in here. It's always worth one more shot. That water's really nice and clear now. Right, oh, we're sinking down to our knees here. This is oh good workout, that's for sure. Good fitness. guys it has been two weeks and we are on lead up to a full moon so we've come back out now and i'm going to walk through these same mangroves and i'm going to put it all to the test and see if there's bigger crabs walking around more crabs walking around less crabs walking around um, on this full moon anyway i've already seen one just here <laughs> uh, i wish you guys could see all the little prawns scooting everywhere it's more prawns than I've seen in ages. The holes in my net are way too big to get them. But wow, one thing is for sure, the water is more murky than last time I was here, which doesn't make it great to see crabs, that's for sure. Probably 300 mil there and I can't even see the bottom, so that's one disadvantage of today, but that's all right. See all this bait moving in the water here, all those ripples, that's all bait. Crab hole? It's only a small hole. Or else it'd be worth putting your thing down. 
All right, so I spotted a little muddy there. He's only a real little fella, but geez, this tide's only just started to sort of come up here. So um, this is going to be very interesting, actually. All righty, we've got a crab over here. Uh, this one, he'll go close to being legal, I reckon. So, yeah, he's not a bad crab. He'll be very close if he starts getting up. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hello, mate. He's not a bad crab. He's probably a little bit small, I'd say, but let's take him over and have a look. Not quite legal, that fella. There's not a bad crab. And I tell you what, you can usually tell that they're really nice and full of meat by the color of their shell or by pressing in on that second leg. So he's gonna, he's gonna go. Oh, mate, go back to where you gotta go. One thing I'm noticing already is a lot more fish activity, like through these mangroves, there's fish flying off everywhere, which I didn't see last time. You can see this tide just flowing on in here. And there's fish in less than 100 mil of water, look like brim, just scooting around everywhere. So definitely seems a bit more alive fish-wise, but let's see how we go on the crabs. So the only difference we've got from today compared to the other day, apart from the full moon and the new moon, is the tide today is a 2.4 metre tide. The tide the other day when we were here was 2.7 metre tide. So that's basically the only difference is I'm not going to have as much water and as much time to um, have a look for these crabs. But, oh, look, surely, surely we'll see a couple. Haven't seen any except for that one as soon as I walked in the water. Another big tip about coming and walking for crabs in the daytime, especially when it's cloudy, I'm finding it very hard to see through the cloud. Virtually impossible if you don't have a good pair of sunnies on. So a good pair of polarized sunnies is, is huge because what you guys can see through the camera and what I can see is totally different. I can see about five or six meters in front of me, especially when I have that sun coming through the clouds turned to my back. So I'm trying to walk the way that I can see the crabs and through the water the best. But yeah, it's quite, as soon as I turn this way, uh, I, I really, I can only see probably a meter and a half to two meters. So a good pair of sunnies, yep, 100% worth bringing, that's for sure. Because I wouldn't be able to see anything without them. Another little one here. Very small, same deal. He's probably only about 100 and probably 120 mil across the shell. So I'll walk straight past him. Just keep trying to look. Here's another one here. Didn't even stop the camera there. Hang on. He's there. Small again. Oh, where's your dad? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, so far, I'm actually shocked. I haven't seen much at all and uh, so far there's no difference between the new moon and the full moon walking for them in the shallows that is we've still got to uh, put these pots out and check them tomorrow i think that'll be a good guide guys please remember this is only an experiment uh, it doesn't by any means mean that you won't catch uh, crabs on a new moon and it doesn't mean that you will catch them on a full moon it's just what a lot of people say and what I go by is the lead up to the full, they get on the move and uh, the bigger tides, but especially those full moon tides is when they really start moving. If I'm wrong or you think different, make sure you leave a comment. Leave a nice comment, don't be nasty. A little mud crab beside me there. Yeah, so far, look, I, I really can't see a difference and it's, in, it's interesting because there are a lot of crabs around here and this is a very productive way of catching them. Just not for me the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Here's one. I think this is a jenny so um, don't know if i'll bother her yeah nah too small it's a jenny go on love all right i've seen one that i think is legal finally most definitely can i get him yes all right he's not a bad crab <laughs> i'm gonna walk to the end here he looks like a pretty decent crab i've been walking for over an hour through soft mud, and that is the first one that I've seen. That is definitely legal. Yeah, so anyway, well, look, we got one legal crab. I uh, wanna walk the rest of this because we're starting to uh, see the tide flow out at the moment. And what that does is any crabs that are buried in the mud, which they do 100% bury themselves in the mud, uh, they will have to come up and walk out with the tide. So that's when you see them start to get on the move with the outgoing. I don't want to waste it because I've only got about 100 mil. So I got, I got him in 100 mil of water. I've only got another 50 metres to walk. And, um, and then we'll be up on the dry and I'll get him out. And have a good look at him. But he looks like a very rusty crab as well. Literally, guys, that's how far off the bank I got him. In this deep of water. That is a rusty buck. 
that right there, that is what you're looking for, eh? He's missing the claw, he's got a couple of stories to tell this fella. Uh, you know what? I'm feeling very generous today. Buddy, you give me some good luck, all right? Oh my God, I didn't have time to push my phone or anything. Have a go at this thing. <laughs> I didn't have time to record. Are you kidding me? It was just out here. It was in there, it was so murky. I didn't even, I couldn't even see properly. <laughs> that one gave me good luck. <laughs> Probably should have kept the other one now. This is gonna make a good feed. This is a good crab. Not letting me grab him. It's holding on to everything here. This fella. Oh man, how good was that? Let's go see him. Hello, mister. Ooh, big Mr. Krabby. Go on, mate. Off you go. I'll let you go. Last time I seen a a nice big buck walking around these rocks. So that's the one I missed. Scooted off into the deep water there just off the rock. So maybe that was that big one I just seen then. Who knows, the same area. Alrighty, so I'm back where I started now. Uh, the first little stretch of water. And um, as you can see, the tide has dropped dramatically. So you can see the bottom really easy now, but it's uh, probably a bit too shallow. Any crab that was in here, I'd say would have made its way out to where it has to be, but um, we're still gonna have a good search through here and give it every chance. Look at the size of this mud crab. I'm gonna have to try and, oh my God, have a go at him. I got, to... oh, this is a good one, guys. A very good one. This is a good crab. This is a good crab. Yes. I'm on the last 20 meters of water before I get back. He's a good crab, definitely. This one is a good crab. Oh my God. I'm gonna keep walking to the end and then um, I'll show you this fella. I'm literally 30 meters from, I've walked probably over a kilometer and I'm the last 30 meters back. And I got one, I got a, well, I've got three so far, but I can feel the weight of him in the net. Are you bloody serious? You've got to be kidding me. Never give up, never give up. If you think there's a little bit you should have a look at and you can't be bothered, look at it. Cause that's where it happens. Oh my God. <laughs> All right guys, there we go. All right, he's a good crab. He's a big crab. Look at the size of that claw. Full of good deeds today, guys. Catch you later, buddy. Look at that. Straight into the smoke stream. Go on, buddy. Catch you later back there, mate. As I said, guys, it's a whole lot of fun. Take your kids to do it, but also you gotta teach them. You don't have to keep everything. Right, I've got three crabs there I could have kept. You almost get as much enjoyment out of letting them go as you do catching them. Anyway, we're going to head back now. We're going to get that scooter. We're going to send it down the creek. We're going to jump on the kayak. We're going to put four more pots out. We're going to leave them in overnight and check them. So all in all, walking for the crabs, I would say definitely more productive. One thing is definitely for sure, that outgoing tide, they start to come out of the mud and move into the mangroves. So you want to walk it on the incoming, walk back on the outcoming, okay? That way all the smoke and all your mud trail and all that's cleared. And uh, yeah, we got three good bucks on the way back and we got one that was just under. So that's zero when we went on the new moon, that's three legal bucks and one just under on the lead up to the full. So far, lead up to the full, kicking its ass. Right, guys, so back down the creek, just like that. I bought old Scooty McScoot back down I've said it once, I'll say it again, that thing is so bloody handy. Tide's on its way out now. So we've got three crabs walking. We're gonna chuck a pot in here, pot in over just down from us about 50 meters. Then we're gonna paddle out in the kayak, chuck another two out. 
I'll spare you the whole traveling out on the kayak and down here and stuff, and we'll just get straight down to the nitty gritty. Two mullet heads in each pot, exactly like we did last time, exact same spots, but will we get the exact same results? All right, so what I'm doing, a couple of mullet heads, and I'll whack on two mullet heads in each pot because that's what I had last time. Clip him on. All right, here we go. Pot number one. Here we go. Oh, right in the middle. You bloody beauty. Drop that white float down there so it's not as easy for people to see if they're walking by. All right, walk a little bit slower here. It's uh, very slippery. <laughs> oh, very slippery. Same spot as I was last time. I'm gonna throw it exact same spot actually. Radio, two pots out, overnight high tide. Let's see how it goes. We'll be back here first thing in the morning. Now I gotta go home, get the kayak, wheel it down to the beach. But all you guys are gonna see is this. Just like that, we are back down at the water. Uh, got the kayak behind me and we're gonna head out, chuck these last two pots out and that's it. Check them tomorrow. Might not look it, but it's blowing about 13 to 15 knots. And that's why you see me with this silly fluffy thing sitting on me so you guys don't have to listen to all that shit wind sounds. So anyway, let's get in this bad boy and head out. It's gonna put me sounder down, see how deep she is. Yep, not a bad depth. We've got about two meters under us, so we might drop them here, I reckon. Alrighty, both pots are deployed. Uh, I'm just gonna blow in with this wind now. I don't know if you can see my pot out there, but that's how far I've blown in about two minutes. And I'm literally gonna, <laughs> it's literally gonna blow me straight into where I need to be. Docking. Oh yeah, dodge the stonefish. Oh, I'm getting old, I'm getting old. Yeah, so these are the bitches don't see. Ugh, not easy to drag it up myself. Right here guys, well that's it for today. I'll see you bright and early in the morning when we go and check these pots and see if the run up to the full moon is clearly the winner. I gotta go get that. I wish it was that big look, I could just go, I just go, eh. eh. <laughs> All right, good morning guys. It's about quarter past seven in the morning and we're back down at the creek. Pretty excited to check what's in these pots to see exactly what this lead up to the full moon has brought us over not much, but well, we've done well. We won't bugger around. We've got to check these two pots, get back, drag that kayak back down and uh, go grab the other two. So see what we've got. How'd we go? How did we go? Bring it up slowly for a bit of suspense. Well, we've definitely got one keeper. That big fella right there, have a look at that. Definitely got a keeper. And we have got one, two, three, four other crabs in there and they're all bucks. There's not one female in there. Look at crabs walking everywhere here. Here's one that's just under. So he's gonna go back. We got this fella and he's a good muddy. Look at that. All right, so we got one. Definite. I'm going to um, try and chuck this little fella back. This little fella's way too small. But this boy's coming home with us. So if you want to check if they're full or empty, you push on this one here. Second leg right at the base. If it's hard, it's good. If it's soft, throw them back. It's not worth taking. So we are at four crabs to three. And we've got three pots to check. This is where it got stuck last time. Get back down. <laughs> Only three little bucks in them ones. Three little fellas. 
out. Full moon crab and only winning by one. I've got the biggest two to check, I reckon. The ones out in the water, they're the ones that should, should have a few. Go and let these fellas go. That's the biggest one. Not a tiny crab, but definitely under. So, they're going back. Once again, that is just an awesome way <laughs> to carry the crab pots, especially on that little weapon. All right, kayak, beach, two more pots. And this is where we run into some audio difficulties. So I'm gonna have to talk you guys through the rest of this one. I went home, grabbed my little mate here, and we headed down to the ramp. Well, slash footpath, but it's great when the tide's this high because you can wheel the kayak straight off the end of the path and into the water. Our pots are out quite a long way, so we made the paddle out to check them. The first pot here had nothing but jennies in it, and that was really disappointing. Now, whilst traveling from one pot to another, and I shit you not here, we got a big bump underneath the kayak from what I think was a bull shark coming to say g'day and see what we were. Anyway, it scared the bejesus out of me with my young fella on the kayak, so I headed in. We emptied out the crabs that we got in that pot. I called Clino to bring down the motor for this little tinny here, and they weren't long till they arrived. Didn't feel safe taking my son back out on the ski, and well, neither did he. <laughs> anyway, we went out to pick up the final pot, and tell you what, it was full of the biggest jennies I've ever seen in my life. Not one legal keeping buck, which is really disappointing. This one here was possibly the biggest female crab I've ever seen before. I'd hate to think how wide that shell is. Returning these girls to the water, that was it for the lead up to the full moon crabbing. Rightio guys, well there you go. A great little experiment to see what's better the lead up to the new or the lead up to the full moon. By no means am I saying it's better on the lead up to the full moon, but our final scores don't lie. We got two crabs and one floater. A floater is an empty crab, which you just put back because there's no meat in it on the lead up to the new moon. And we got four good solid bucks on the lead up to the full. That is as honest as a comparison as what I could do from the shore. And I'm gonna do it again in the boat in a little while and see how we go. Now guys, leave a comment down the bottom if you think that there's a better way that I could do this test. Also leave a comment if there's any other videos you'd like to see us make. We get a lot of comments and I try my best to get back to everyone. We read every comment that you guys send guys. We really enjoy it, so thank you. But anyway guys, I hope that's shed a little bit of light on that for you. Also, I hope you learned a few things and got something from that video, just what you can do uh, without a boat, all right? So guys, thanks heaps for watching. We really appreciate the support. If you want any merch, jump over to outerline.com. We appreciate all the support. Massive thank you to our Patreons. You guys are legends. See you on the next one, guys. Thanks again.